you have another incredible, um, incredibly tragic story as it relates to your mother. Yes. And what happened with you and her. Um, when you tell it, when I, when I heard it, mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. Yeah. I just thought to myself, is this real? Yes. Tell my audience what happened to you one night. One night, my mother came into my room and she put a gun to the pillow that she put over my head, pulled the trigger, and believed I was dead. She walked out, went to oh, her. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did the gun go off? The gun went off. She shot you in the head. The bullet missed me. The bullet did not touch me. Woo! I need a second. Dr. Sean needs a second. Are you serious? I'm serious. I didn't even hear the gunshot. I was asleep. That was God. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. And it, I talk for a living. <laughs> I get that. What, what, so, she, so she shoots and it misses. She thinks you're, you're dead. Yes. And then what happens? She went in her room, wrote a suicide note, put the gun to her head and pulled the trigger, committed suicide. So her desire that night, I know, breathe. Just, just take a deep breath, because I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, do it for me. Take a deep breath. There you go. Just let it out. Let it out. Because her desire that night was to commit a murder-suicide. Yes. Wow. And I, I'm asking you to tell your story, mm -hmm. not to be a voyeur into your life. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking you to tell it so that when we get to the part of your story mm -hmm. where you explain people how you motivate people for a living, mm -hmm. that they understand how far you had to go to get there. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. And I, I, um, I you know, I'm, I'm a Christian guy, you know, so, I, so it's going to come out right here. Mm -hmm. but, but it's nothing but the grace of God. Right. That you are Absolutely. sitting in this church. Yes. I mean, nothing but the grace yes. of God. Yes. I am, I am, I am. I think it's true for both of you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, I guess the thing that, that links both of your stories together is that your trauma is so acute and it's in your childhood. So, 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 so Cynthia, help me with this. After she kills herself, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing? You, are you still in the bed? Do you know it's happened? No. No, I don't know anything happened until doctors and police officers turn on my light and ask me, am I okay? And I have no idea why they're asking me that. I didn't learn any of this. How old were you? Until later, nine years old. Nine years old, oh my goodness. Nine years old. Mm -hmm. So you don't even realize no. what's taking place? No. Then, I mean, where did you live after that? How did you... I had to go and live with relatives because I was the only child between my mother and my father. Yeah. They got a divorce when I was young and he had another family. So my grandmother was all I had because my father was no longer in my life. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to stay with her. She tells me she can no longer take care of me and sends me to live with relatives that I had never met before. Wow. I didn't know who they were. The first day I saw them was when I walked across the door. As if you had not already been through enough. Right. Right? Right. And, and in that moment, what are you thinking and feeling? My God, <laughs> what's going to happen to me? Probably, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's where I would be. Yeah. That's where I would be. Yeah, I, uh, felt, I felt completely alone. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what's amazing about your story? It, it, aren't just the details, but, I, but as I sit here, I'm, I'm, I'm remembering myself at nine years old. Same thing with right. your story. I'm remembering how vulnerable and how big the world was to me. Right. And how there's, there's this great line that says, Lord, uh, my boat is so small and this ocean is so big. And that to me encapsulates being nine. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and, and I can't imagine what it must have felt like at nine years old yeah. to have to deal with these cataclysmic situations. Mm -hmm. um, if I asked you, um, Dr. Aaron, I'm coming back in a second, sure. but if I asked you, what was the overriding feeling of your childhood? What would you say to me? Lonely. Hmm. Sad, lonely, unloved. Mm. And more drama happened when you went into the house? Yes. Tell us about that. Do you mind? I'm, I'm here to tell. I know that's right. I swear to God, y'all, you clap. <laughs> <laughs>